Hey, y'all. You're listening to It's Been a Minute from NPR. I'm Brittany Luce. Summer is here. And one of the best things about summer is having long stretches of time to pick up something juicy to read. A beach read just helps you escape. It facilitates that escape, you know, and it's part of that holistic pleasure that you have during the summers. That's romance author Bolu Babalola. And she's joining me, along with fellow romance author Emily Henry, to talk summer book wrecks. Bolu and Emily are some of the biggest names in romance right now. Like, they're huge. So I knew I could count on them for some really good picks. And Emily has thought about this a lot. She even has a theory about what makes a good summer read. You can be on a beach or at a pool with like so much stimuli around you, so much going on, and it will still pull you deeply into the story pretty quickly. It's funny because I feel like a lot of times those are like thrillers or romances. It's like the two things that you're like just needing the answer to a question. So it is like, who is killing me and all of my friends? Or will they or won't they? You know, they're both questions that are pretty, pretty much established from the first chapter in those genres. Today on the show, we'll be getting all their wrecks. And later, we play a dating game featuring literary hotties. Stay with us. Emily Bolu, welcome to It's Been a Minute. Hi, lovely to be here. Thank you for having us, Brittany. So we are going to get into these recommendations that you both brought in a second. But first, I want the listeners to hear a bit more about your work. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about your latest books? Bolu, we'll we'll start with you. Yeah, so Honey and Spice is a collegiate romance uh, set in a Southern British university within the ACS, which is an African-Caribbean society. Within this little bubble is Kiki Banjo, who hosts a radio show where she gives romantic advice all this advice kind of seems to be worthless when like a, a tall, dark, handsome, of course, guy wanders into the university under the name of Malachi Corday, and all the girls seem to be in a tizzy over him and in pursuit <laughs> of discovering what it is about this guy that makes her girls lose all their senses. She ends up, as you do, in a fake relationship with him. <laughs> <laughs> their relationship develops from there and she discovers what love is, but it's also just about friendship and, and Kiki learning to to lower her guards and fall in love with her girls and her community and herself as well. Mm. It's such a fun journey. The paperback edition of your book just came out. Is that right? Yeah, in the UK. And it's coming out in the US in, on July the 5th, I believe. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And Emily, how about you? Talk to us about your latest book. So I do think Bolu and I were drinking like the same fake dating juice as we were writing these books. Um, <laughs> my last book, it just came out in at the end of April and it's it's called Happy Place. And it's the story of Wynn and Harriet who've been together since college. And a huge part of their relationship has been that they have this shared friend group with whom they take a yearly trip to the coast of Maine. At the start of the book, Harriet is getting ready to go on this year's trip. When she gets there, she's going to come clean with their shared friend group that she and Wynn actually actually split up five months before the trip. Only when she gets there, (laughs) Wynne is already there. And because uh, they really want their friends to have that one last beautiful experience before they destroy the friend group, they decide we'll just hold off one more week on telling them that we are no longer together. So kind of like Honey and Spice, it's like it is this love story between a couple, but it's also very much about Harriet's best friends. And just being in that phase of life where you're kind of growing in different directions from a lot of the people that you've been closest to and have to figure out what that means for your relationships and whether they can weather those changes. Hmm. Hmm. Fake dating juice. If they bottle that, I want to drink it. (laughs) I know. I know. Same. (laughs) Oh, so you're both here with me today to talk all about summer reading. You've each brought a few recommendations. Mm -hmm. With that summer energy, what are some of the tried and true books you'd recommend to any friend looking for a juicy read on a nice day? Bolu, start us off. So obviously... The first one has to be Happy Place because <laughs> I recently read that and I was completely enveloped by it by the story and I was and I fell in love with the friendship group and it was just so lovely and I think it's an excellent uh, book to read while you're on holiday and also it made me like 
appreciate the beauty in my friendships too. So yeah, that was one of my picks. Oh, that's so amazing. I'm honored. You picked Emily's newest book. That is so beautiful. I love reading a good old Emily Henry book on vacation. <laughs> I totally. To There's one vacation where I was reading Beach Read and I was stayed up really late getting to a certain section of it. My husband was up like he's playing a game on his phone and I was reading and um, I sighed. And I closed the book and I pressed it to my chest. My husband was like, are you okay? Like, is everything fine? Um, and I was like, it's just too romantic. I need oh to my gosh. Oh, thank you. That's so nice. Wow. I'm honored. Absolutely. Absolutely. Emily, what is your first pick for a summer read? Balu started us off strong. What's your first pick? Well, I know I'm now I'm like, well, I should have said honey and spice, but that does go without no. saying. So my first pick, I will go for the kind of thriller edge. And it's, you know, what we were talking about where there's this escapist element, even though there's a lot of murder and mayhem. And that would be Amanda Jayati says you're invited. Mm. It's a mystery. What's going on? Who did it? All of that. But it also is set on this um at this really luxe resort in Sri Lanka where there's this Sri Lankan wedding happening and the main character is going home to Sri Lanka for the first time in a few years and you don't know what made her flee before, but she's going back to see her former best friend marry her own ex-boyfriend. So there is a lot. It is juicy. It is kind of decadent feeling. It's like hot and sultry and it is just exactly what we've been talking about. Ooh, you're Best friend marrying your ex. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. That sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Bolu, what is your next pick? Okay. So this book swept me off my feet last summer. And it's Seven Days in June, of course, by <gasps> Tia Williams. I read that one. Yeah. It's one of those books that, like, I threw the book across the room at one point because I was just overwhelmed. <laughs> I was just like, I was, lo- I was just losing my mind over it. It's so romantic and it's so sexy. And you know, when you're falling in love with, with the guy as you're reading it, it was one of those books. So it's, yeah. um, it's about two old flames who reunite after 15 years. They were kind of childhood sweethearts, but with a twist because their whole love story happened over seven days and then the guy disappeared now they're both famous authors one is a romance author and one is more literary fiction Mm -hmm. and they're thrown together through you know a series of circumstances and it's basically a second chance romance but what's so beautiful is that it talks about the gravity of teenage love you know I feel like it's seen as a very frivolous thing a very like a very light-hearted marshmallow thing but I think the fact that it has carried it stayed with them their whole lives they've evolved in so many ways and yet their love has evolved with them and also crucially it's extremely hot like very very spicy <laughs> you think everyone will yes. enjoy it <laughs> I read that one last summer. I listened to it on audiobook. I had to do the equivalent of, I guess, the audio equivalent of throwing a book across the room, or I would pause it and scream. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) Pause it and scream. I wonder, like, you know, to that point, Bolu, like, you mentioned that this book seems to take teenage romance seriously, which mm. I agree. It's it's something that's not always taken seriously, even though you're having big, legitimate feelings when you're at that age, right? Why should we pay more attention to it as a serious topic in literature? I think that if we listen to ad- like teenage romance and what it teaches us, it really teaches us about ourselves and our instincts. And I think the older we get, the, the less we listen to our instincts. It's so powered by impulse and I think that's a really beautiful thing that that we forget you know often we think that oh falling in love with in two weeks as an adult is impossible obviously there's layers to love and it happens in stages but that initial spark Mm -hmm. the ignition that it takes to kind of birth love I think can happen very quickly you know and I think adulthood can can make us forget that Hmm, that's such a beautiful sentiment. Emily, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. How do you feel about how we think about teen romance in literature and also in real life? Yeah, a big part of the reason I like writing romance is I think romance is a really natural way to force a coming of age on someone. (laughs) Because I think when you are falling in love, you're so vulnerable. And every single trigger you have will probably get hit at some point. And so it's like, 
one of very few ways I think that you can find yourself forced to grow and to confront your past in a way. And when you see a love that can change its shape and adapt as you change and adapt, I think that's really, really beautiful and something that that we crave as people because a lot of our relationships can't withstand that kind of transformation. And so when you look at a book like Seven Days in June, that's just something that's so beautiful and that we all long for, it's just people that w- that we can stick to, people that will still make sense in our lives even when we look very different from how we might look today. All right. Wow. Another great pick from Bolu. Emily, give us another pick. I would love to talk about This Time Tomorrow by Emma Straub, which just came out in paperback um, a couple weeks ago. It's kind of, to me, it's sort of a perfect read because it's a little bit of everything. Like it's a little bit of a time travel story, a little bit of a romance, a little bit of like a family saga. Basically, the, the premise is this main character is turning 40 in the night of her 40th birthday party. She has this weird experience and wakes up back in her bedroom at age 16 and her dad is the age you know I know I know (laughs) it's like I know you're like it is a nightmare but because she's just turned 40 she's also having this reckoning where she's thinking like did I choose right did I should I have done things differently and so she goes back to 16 and she's kind of like all right well here's you know the romances I didn't pursue and here are the friendships that I messed up and and all of that but more than any of it she goes back in time and her dad is young her dad is much younger than he is now. He's ailing in in the present timeline. And it really, beyond everything else, is a love story about a father and a daughter and about did you use the time with the people that you love as well as you could have. And it was so beautiful. It made me cry. It was one of those books where I wanted to not do anything but read it. But like my parents were texting like, do you want to come have a barbecue? And I'm like, yes, (laughs) yes, I have to go have a barbecue. I have to like make the right decision here. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's so beautiful. Huh, Bolu, next pick. Y'all are on a roll. Bolu, what's your next pick? (laughs) Mine is You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Quake A. Maisie. Mm. That is a gorgeous gorgeous book it's one of the most exquisitely written books i've ever read again it is a love story this time it's about a widow this is a very hard book to talk about without spoiling because there's like a huge messy twist in it but the main Mm -hmm. character Faye, she's healing from from grief and she thinks she can't find love again she's dating a guy this is not a spoiler she dates a guy and she thinks this is it you know this is this is the cap of the kind of love that i want i mean it's nice it's pleasant enough it's fun, but it's not deep. And the person that it mm. is deep with is somebody that she shouldn't necessarily go there with, <laughs> but she does. <laughs> and you may not necessarily agree with it. I mean, it's a very, like, people have different opinions about, you know, whether she should have gone there or not. The thing that people agree with is that it's a very, very beautiful love. It's a love that's just so naked and pure and no preconceptions with each other and it's about love as a as a liberating force oh i wonder what you mean by that when you talk about having like a this love that's like raw and pure because it's so i think because they meet each other not seeing each other as potential lovers it's like the dating apps right when you meet somebody through a dating app you have this kind of performance that you do this dance that you do the cooler version of yourself whereas where because they met each other not knowing in their head they weren't supposed to see each other that way they were able to just be completely themselves there was none of that pretense which allowed themselves to know each other fully and i think sometimes the performance of romance can get in the way of romance itself Hmm. i remember when i met my boyfriend i was totally not in the space to meet anyone and so when i met him we were having these cool like frank conversations i was seeing him just as a as a friend and then the romance happened because in my head I wasn't pretending to be like the cool you know the (laughs) one-liners I mean the (laughs) one-liners happened anyway because I'm naturally extremely witty I'm joking but um (laughs) I wasn't thinking of okay how do I okay how do I position myself to like seem like the cool aloof girl you know I was completely emotionally naked and I think this this book and the because of the circumstances within which they meet allows for that to happen I am excited to check that one out. I just need everyone to read this book because the twist twists very well. You were twisted by the twist. I was twisted (laughs) by the twist. (laughs) That is enough of an endorsement for me personally. (laughs) Emily, bring us home. One more pick. 
One more pick, and I'm sticking with this kind of intense emotional romance theme. I think that's what this summer is all about. So I would love to recommend to anyone who's not read it yet, Kennedy Ryan's Before I Let Go, which is Mm. so beautiful, so emotional. It's also a second chance romance, which I feel like is a a kind of subcategory that I'm really careful about because it always is like innately tricky and messy. But this book is such a gorgeous version of that. It's about a couple who run a restaurant in Atlanta and they were married for years and they have a couple of kids and some tragedy has unfolded in their life that's ended with them getting a divorce. And they're still really great co-parents and business partners and all of that. But the trust is just totally broken there. They both kind of think, you know, it's time to move on. And then the moving on kind of triggers some of the old feelings. And it is just so beautiful. It's a gorgeous depiction of therapy, which for Mm. anyone who's read my books knows I like love a romance (laughs) with therapy in it. (laughs) Huge fan of that. And the, the leads are just both feel so real. And I think it's kind of fun to just read about couples who are like further along in their relationship in their lives, um, but still having this beautiful, sexy, life-changing love story unfold between the two of them. Mm, That one's been on my list for a while. I haven't read it yet. Oh my gosh, you'll love it. I am so excited to dig into that one. And I know a lot of our listeners will be as well. Oh my gosh, my pleasure. (laughs) Had a great time. Would both of you mind sticking around to play a little game? Of course. Sure. Coming up, we play a game called Bookish Babes. Stay with us. All right, Emily, Bolu, we are about to play a game called Bookish Babes. We've taken a few literary hunks, and we're going to pit them against each other for a few different date scenarios. And you both have to pick who you are taking on the date and why. Does that make sense? Yeah. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way to win or lose. Well, there's no way to lose the game. I think we all True. win. Are y'all ready to get started? Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Wonderful. Okay. So for our first date, this one is for the adventurous girlies out there. Would you rather go on an escape the room date with Khal Drogo, the beefy tribe leader from <laughs> the Song of Ice and Fire series, or Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice? <laughs> Who are you escaping the room with? Bolu, we'll start with you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I would choose Khal Drogo because I just feel like he would just smash everything. And so we would get through it quickly. (laughs) I think Darcy would be very methodical about it, but annoyingly so, and wouldn't listen to your advice. (laughs) So I think Carl Drago. All righty. I think I love that answer. Emily, what about you? (laughs) Yeah, I feel like for the exact same logic, I'm just thinking about the claustrophobia of being in a locked Mm. room with a man who hates your family and thinks you're tolerably (laughs) handsome. Um, And I also agree, Cal Drago would just like, yeah, he would just like rip the door off the hinges. You're fine. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I'm loving the reasoning behind this. I'm in full agreement. On to our next date. This is for sussing out the tastes of your potential partner. Would you rather go on a thrifting date with Jay Gatsby from The Great Gatsby (laughs) or Robin Hood from The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood? This one, actually, this one, I had a controversial answer for this one. And I would exaggerate in saying that it tore our our team apart in (laughs) discussing this. Emily, what are your thoughts? Oh, my gosh. Well, I do think I do totally think that Jay Gatsby would technically be the better thrift shopper. I think he would like know the brands better than I do. But I think I still would rather go with Robin Hood because ultimately Robin Hood is hotter. Yeah. Wait, canonically Robin Hood is hotter? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Ultimate, specifically the fox, the fox Robin Hood. Oh, my God. The same, Emily. (laughs) Yes. Everybody wants that fox. Fox Robin Hood. Canonically hot. 100%. Thank you, Bolu. In fact, when you said Robin Hood, 
I thought of the fox. I can't lie. Wow. 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 Okay. Wow. You shook the table with that one. Bolu, it <laughs> sounds like you agree the animated fox version of Robin Hood is canonically hotter. Yeah, absolutely. Than Jay Gatsby. But is that who you would rather go thrifting with? I do have to choose Robin Hood just because I think it would be more resourceful and would have like an eye mm. for like those spots in the corner and know the hidden bits. You know, I think Gatsby would choose like the obvious ones. <laughs> Whereas Robin Hood, I don't know, he's in my head as a bit of a like a, a hipster thrifter. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And has cooler style. Um, I think Gatsby is just very designer heavy, you know, just very, it could be very tacky. Now we need wow. Brittany's answer because we know that she thinks her answer right. was controversial and it's seeming like ours are. My, apparently it was. My answer was Jay Gatsby. Okay. My answer was for the reasons that you all outlined. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm like, okay, I guess y- you all went into this thinking about like the focus of romance, which is fair. <laughs> I was thinking like, I'm like, who's going to get me the finest cashmere? Who's going to help yes. me get those like Scottish cable knit sweaters? Yes. But also the, I mean, the other thing is, is that Jay Gatsby at the end of the day is a scammer and yeah. Robin Hood <laughs> is a good guy. So maybe you all actually made the better choice than I did. So. <laughs> I'm not going to change my answer. I just feel like in the romance <laughs> montage of us thrifting together, I feel like I would have more fun with Robin Hood, you know? Yeah. I can see Bolu throwing her head back, like laughing. Right. Like they're just having a great time. <laughs> they're trying on like like glasses from the 70s. Yeah, like silly yeah. hats, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next date is a more erudite one. Would you rather go to a history museum date with Jesus from the Bible (laughs) or Christian Grey from Fifty Shades of Grey? I already knew my answer. I already knew my answer. Um, But who are you gazing at artifacts with? Bolu. Definitely Christian Grey. First of all, Christian Grey? Yeah, because I actually don't think Jesus was canonically hot. I think that, if because the thing is, if Jesus was hot, I feel like it would be easy to be like, yeah, worship him. The whole point is that, like, people were like, oh. should I worship this guy? Like, you can worship, yeah. it's so easy to worship a hot guy, which is why I think. That's I'm, a good point. Right? Oh my gosh, Bolu, you're blowing my mind right now. <laughs> I'm like thinking about all the cult documentaries I've watched, and it's like, those people are not even close to hot, and exactly. they've got a lot yeah. of followers. Mm. Exactly. So I think Chris and Gray um, defile a few monuments with him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know what? Also, too, I hate to be all like, I don't know, city girls about it, but Christian Gray is rich. Yeah. Jesus was not about being a baller. No, he wasn't. That's not, exactly. He'd probably buy like a price, like piece of art for me, you know? Like, I hadn't thought about that. I originally was like, oh, I'm going with Jesus because yeah. Christian Gray, <laughs> sometimes he stressed me out. But um, <laughs> that is interesting. That is interesting. Oh okay, gosh. okay. Emily, what about you? You go into the History Museum oh gosh. with Jesus or Christian Grey? I am so, d- no, I'm so delighted that this moment is finally coming when somebody's <laughs> asking me this very specific question. Um, I still am reeling from finding out that Jesus probably wasn't hot because in my mind, Jesus has always been a hottie. Um <laughs> But I think I would still go with Jesus. Like, I mean, I'm nervous about going with, I would be nervous about going with either of them to the history Mm. museum. Mm, That's true. I would, I would not know how to act right around either of those people, but from, from a sheer curiosity standpoint, especially if it's like you're going through like some, you know, ancient history, maybe Jesus knows some stuff that like (laughs) the curators don't even know. It's a more mature perspective from Jesus. Yeah. Right. So Bolu and I can double date to the museum is what I'm learning. Yeah, it'll be cute. (laughs) This is, uh, that's actually a really good point. If you have different answers, you can double date. Last date. They're both more like um, legends than literary hotties, but the stories still remain. Who cares? We're not going to get into semantics with all this. Would you rather go on a roller skating date with Hercules <laughs> or Mulan? Bolu, what say you? Oh, my gosh. I have a thing for himbos. <laughs> and I feel like a roller skating date is a perfect time for a himbo to shine. I think he'll have fun yeah. with it. I think he'll catch me when I fall. He'll make me laugh. <laughs> and I feel like Mulan is like, she's very serious. Mm. Um, rightly so. 
you know, she's fighting for her people. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Hercules just, I feel like it'll just be so much fun. And he's like, he just is a beautiful airhead. So I just feel like it's the right place for us to have a great date. Roller skating with a himbo on yeah. a Saturday night. That actually sounds like a really good plan. So much fun. Your next book. Yeah. Your next book. <laughs> the title please. of my next book. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Emily, what about you? Oh my gosh. Roller skating Bolu- date with Hercules or Mulan? Bolu's logic is flawless. <laughs> However, I think Mulan is also so athletic and, and strong and powerful. That's what I said. That I... Yeah, that I feel like she would be, like, wiping the floor with everyone. Mm. And I don't know that I could have a lasting relationship with either of them because I just think, you know, one's too intense and one's not intense enough. Mm -hmm. But I think I would Mm -hmm. go with Mulan. I think I would feel like this is my one shot. This is my one shot to to be with someone like this. So, yeah. (laughs) I already was thinking Mulan because I was like, okay, she's coordinated. Mm -hmm. Um, She's a warrior. I know that Hercules is too, but I feel like Mulan has more grit. Yeah. Mulan's more graceful. Yeah. Mulan's more graceful. And one of the things I said when this question was posed to me when we were prepping for this conversation was that Hercules is top heavy. And I think he's going to be falling (laughs) a lot. He's got that big, big chest. And I think that could come in handy, like, say, after the roller skating date. (laughs) Right. But during the roller skating date, I'm like, am I going to be picking you up a lot? Are you going to be falling over? (laughs) We don't know. We don't know. So a double date with you guys as well. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think we can make this work. I think the three of us and our two partners can make this work. (laughs) Absolutely. I think I absolutely can make that work. Oh, well, that was bookish babes. Thank you both so much for playing with me. (laughs) Thank you. Emily Bolu. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been a minute. Thank you for having us, Brittany. Had a great time. Thanks again to authors Bolu Babalola and Emily Henry. Their latest books, Honey and Spice and Happy Place, are out now. This episode of It's Been a Minute was produced by Barton Girdwood, Alexis Williams, Liam McBain, Corey Antonio Rose. Our editor is Jessica Placek. Engineering support came from Patrick Murray. Our executive producer is Verilyn Williams. Our VP of Programming is Yolanda Sanguini. Our Senior VP of Programming is Anya Grundman. All right, that's all for this episode of It's Been a Minute from NPR. I'm Brittany Luce. Talk soon.